What's up, everybody? Today, I am going to be showing you guys why you should always be making sure you play your training camp games and also the mini games offered to you each week in your weekly training. Madden 24 didn't add a whole lot to the franchise mode, but what it did do is bring back training camp and also bring back the mini games and put them in to your franchise so that you are able to play them and use it to your advantage to grow your players into some serious game changers. In this video, I am gonna be showing you guys how much extra XP you can earn with your players if you follow the steps that I show you. And they're pretty simple. Choose your focus players, do your training camp, and do your mini games. Now, all of these things are predicated off of a few different factors. The first one being the age of your players. The second also being the development trait that they have, normal, star, superstar, and X factor. And the final one, is their overall and what i mean by that is that xp bar that you see right below the overall you guys have probably looked at it how many times and you've probably looked at your progression history to see what you're earning week to week for your in-game attributes but what a lot of people don't realize is by not utilizing the mini games properly and really putting it to the test on certain players and sticking with it that you are leaving a lot of upgrades on the table for your players each and every year for those of you who are new to Madden 24, maybe you're not sure what the training camp is. This is what shows every single time you start a new season. So it's gonna be in preseason week one, it's the only week you can do it. And if you click on the training camp tab, it's, it's gonna take you to all of these different little mini games that you can run with players. And all of them are dedicated to certain position groups. If you look at the rewards area, it tells you how many points you need, how much XP you'll get, how many skill points you'll get if you get any, and if your player will get any rookie snaps if it is a rookie that you have as your focus player or that you're doing this drill with. Now the training camp is a special one for one reason, and that is because not only do you get rookie snaps, like you can see here on the target passing, if you do this and you get gold, you will get 200 rookie snaps. So that means that you'll get to see your development trait on your hidden development drafted players a lot quicker than just playing every game with them. You'll also get a full upgrade point regardless of how much XP you need to get that first overall upgrade for the player that you have chosen to do this drill with. So once you go through and you play your entire drill and you make sure you get gold and you can restart this as many times as you like. So don't worry if you mess up on the first one or the second one, you can do it however many times you like. You're gonna come to this screen, it's gonna tell you you got gold, you hit continue and it's gonna take you back to the training camp page and show you what you've earned for the player. So we did this with CJ Stroud and we are going to get a skill point and 2000 XP. The other awesome thing about these games is if you play them, you have a chance to gain extra development for your players. Your player can actually go up one development. They can't go from normal to X Factor. That would be a little too OP. But if you have a guy who's normal or star, they can go up to star or superstar by just doing the mini games. Now it is very random and it is very difficult to do. The best chance you have at it is by doing it the first time on gold and getting as high of a score as you possibly can. You don't wanna just hit the threshold for gold, you wanna blow it out of the water and that'll increase your chance just a little bit to potentially get a development upgrade for the player that you did that drill with. And I gotta tell you guys, this does take a while. It is gonna add time to your franchise playing experience. So if you don't wanna do this, hey, I mean, that's up to you, but you just can't be upset when you miss out on all of the extra XP and your players are not as good as they could potentially be in your franchise. The one thing I noticed, and I did this a lot because you think about it, I have seven players I'm gonna show you guys the results for, and out of all of that, so that's seven players, um, 18, 19, 20, 21 weeks, because I went from preseason week one all the way through to uh, week 18, I only had two upgrade chances for the development. So it's very rare. But if you are willing to do this for the players you have focused and you do it every week religiously, you could potentially get, I'd say maybe average one per season. And that can make an absolutely tremendous difference in the trajectory of the player that you are working with. And that also goes the same for the mini games. Now the mini games are the ones that you can play every single week for the same with the same player over and over again. The training camp, like I said, only in week one, but weekly strategy also has the option down here on team profile, your focus players. Whoever you choose here is who you will end up using in mini games if you so choose. So if I click on CJ Stroud, it's gonna give me the options that he can do. Passing skeleton, passing skeleton out man, target passing, so on and so forth. The other main difference is when you do the mini games here, 
every single one, no matter what you do, is capped, and it's 750 XP for gold. There's no skill points, it's strictly just the XP. And sometimes because of that, and I'll be honest, I was the same way when I first got the game. I'm like, you know what? It's really just not worth it to me to do this every single week. But after doing this testing, guys, let me tell you, it is definitely worth it depending on the players that you put in your focus players. And that is another big reason why you want to continue working on your talent tree for your staff so that way you can unlock all six areas of focus players because man can that change the team dynamic very quickly for you so what i'm going to do here guys is i'm going to show you the players that we started with and then i'm going to show you what they were able to get to after a full season of me doing every single mini game i could for them and also doing the training camp now this is with me not doing any of the games i have not played them at all it is strictly sim so the only input i have on these players is the training camp in the beginning of the season and the mini games each and every week and i only focused on the guys of course that i had as my focus players no pun intended yes it was but it just goes to show that this is what you can get with just relying on the sim and I can imagine for those of you who play the game, who know how to rack up yardage and, and score points and are willing to just, you know, go and get your running back that you want or receiver 200 yards every single week, the amount of XP you're gonna get is gonna amplify. But this here is just the amount you're leaving on the table if you're not taking advantage of the mini games each and every week. So what I did first is I took the first five players because that's how many focus players I had unlocked and I did every week for all five. And let me tell you guys, it was a long process. It was, and, and you know, I would say that for all five, for every single week, it took me about four to five hours. And that's, you know, doing them, getting gold for all of them, simming the week, doing all that fun stuff. All of this stuff is done on base settings. It's pro, I don't play, none of that. I've turned off injuries for this. So that way I can make sure I can show you the full season's worth. This is also on base settings for XP and progression. So if you use other settings, this may vary depending on if you have it up, down, raised, lowered, whatever the case is. Keep that in mind, please. Um, I didn't touch anything else. I literally jumped in, got the players I wanted, and off we went to the experiment. And these are the five players that we started with. I started with CJ Stroud, Hank Bigsby, Nico Collins, Xavier Hutchison, and Zach Harrison. And the reason that it's just so random is because I wanted to show how it is for say a higher overall rookie that has a development trait that's hidden. I wanted to show you lower overall players with normal development. I wanted to show you guys that have maybe been in the league a couple of years and are already sort of established but aren't dominating players. What can you do with them? And I also wanted to show you what it was like for players that never even touched the field and all you had was the training and the mini camps every week. The last other piece of the puzzle that I want to let you guys know is I did run this a multiple times as well. So I'm going to show you guys what they were able to do without me doing the mini games, but they're listed as a focus player. And I'm also going to show you what they've been able to do with me doing every mini game for them to show you this difference in what you can get if you put the effort in. The first player I did, of course, CJ Stroud, rookie quarterback. We know he's got superstar development, so his development is really high and he has a little bit higher of an XP bar because he's coming in as an 81 overall, 6,199 XP. Speaking of the XP, this does not change on position at all. The three factors I mentioned earlier, and I'll mention them again, age, overall, and development trait are the only things that determine the amount of XP needed to upgrade to the next overall up. And that is why you'll see me double down on receiver or quarterback or running back because it doesn't matter. And I wanted to do the drills that were at least the easiest for me to complete. So that's the disclaimer. Now let's look at it. So CJ Stroud, without me touching anything, without me playing a game yet, he is an 81 overall field general quarterback at 21 years old. He's got an XP bar of 6,199. Now, of course, once we unlock that superstar trait, that is going to drop a little bit. For the first test, I just sim the season. I didn't touch the mini games or training camp whatsoever for CJ Stroud, and he still was able to get four skill point upgrades. And you can see he's really close to a fifth as well with that XP bar. So, hey, four overall is pretty cool. That's a pretty good upgrade, especially for not doing any work. But now we're in the file where I did the work with the mini games every week with him as focus player and look at how many upgrades he was able to get. Eight total skill point upgrades for CJ Stroud. That is crazy. I mean, that is a lot of upgrades for a single season. 
and now he is up to an 89 overall quarterback. And all I had to do was the mini games. I mean, look at the stats that this guy's got now, and he's just going into his second season. Now, I only applied it to the one that was top, which is field general, and that's what I'm going to do for the rest of these players. You, of course, can apply these skills wherever you want. I'm just showing you the drastic difference in overall that you can get from doing this. And now the next player that I worked on was Tank Bigsby. And the reason I chose Tank Bigsby is because he's 22 years old, so he's a year different than CJ Stroud. He's in normal development, no hidden feature there. And he also is a much lower overall. He's only a 72. How many times have you drafted a running back that's 72 overall normal dev and you're like, dang, well, he ain't gonna be the number one back. Well, maybe this will change your mind. So he started off as a 72 overall. Without me doing any mini games in the first test, he was able to get two upgrade points. And the crazy part is when I did another sim, but I did all the mini games for him, not only did he get those two upgrade points, but he got another three for a total of five. So he more than doubled the skill points he earned just by me doing the mini games and not even touching the field. He's not a starter. And here is what his stats look like now that we've done the upgrades. A 77 overall running back who barely touched the field. He can probably fight for a running back two or even at least get playing time in a committee situation in your franchise mode. My next test was Nico Collins. And the reason I chose Nico is because he's already an 80 overall. He's 24 years old, two years in the league going into his third. And these are the, a lot of the players that you'll usually end up finding in free agency. And the question is not if he's talented, it's can he still end up becoming a difference maker even though he's normal development, he's an 80 overall, and he's already a few years into his career. He ended up still being able to get two XP points from me not touching any mini games and letting him go throughout the entire season and just playing. He did start, he was our number one receiver, so that is also a factor in this. And then now, Nico Collins, after a season of me grinding his mini games and doing training camp with him, he was also able to get five upgrade points, even though his XP bar is that much more full, and he's a little bit older than what Tank Bigsby is. So after all of that, he ends up going to an 85 overall, 86 with that morale boost. And look at what Nico Collins has become. He has went from your run of the mill free agency wide receiver that you could potentially get something out of to now a guy that could potentially be a difference maker for your team for years to come. And here's another receiver, Xavier Hutchinson. This is just one of those guys you might draft late, or maybe you think you whiffed on a pick or who knows, maybe he's an undrafted free agent that you sign afterwards, or just a filler guy. But a lot of people end up with these 67, 68 overall guys on their team, and it's like, well, what am I gonna be able to do with him? And he was able to get six upgrade points, which really changed the trajectory of his career by a ton, in my opinion. And here's a look at him after the upgrades are applied. He's up to a 73 overall, and honestly, he is a viable receiver now. And now think about Tank Bigsby, who was a 72 overall normal development when we started with him. And I did the one season with him. He was able to get five upgrade points. So now imagine if you did the same thing with Xavier Hutchinson, you could take him from a 67 overall all the way up to potentially a 78 overall receiver in just two seasons from a guy that you found that you thought you had no business having on your team. This test really showed me that a lot more can be gotten out of the players that I draft, even if the overall or the development trait is not what I wanted it to be. If I'm willing to put the work in, if I'm willing to do the focus player for him, it can change everything. And the same can be said for Zach Harrison. Now, yes, you're gonna see some guys that have pretty much the same trajectory when it comes to how many upgrades they were able to get, but I wanted to do this with multiple players to show you that it wasn't a fluke with one player or two and that this is something you can repeat the process for with multiple players and still get that same great outcome to change their career. Zach Harrison had to show a little love to the defensive side. He started off at a 69, and after we were done doing all the mini games, he was also able to get five upgrade points. So now he goes from a 69 overall that you may have found in the seventh round or maybe an undrafted free agent to a 74 overall player that now has a chance with another good year of work to become a real good playmaker for you in the future and even maybe now a good depth piece going into the offseason. I did two more tests on top of the initial five and the first one was Will Levis and there was a few reasons that I wanted to do him. He's 24 years old so he's already a little bit higher in the age bracket than your average rookie quarterback. He's a much lower overall than CJ Stroud. 69 overall, no development trait and this really relates to me because I have drafted so many quarterbacks over the years in Madden, and I'm sure you guys have as well. 
that maybe you thought they were going to be decent, right? You're like, oh, he had a story. I'm going to take him. He might have superstar dev or whatever. And he ends up being a 68 or a 69. And you're like, dang, man, I was really hoping that this could be like a steal for me and I could turn him into a franchise quarterback. Well, this guy was our third string quarterback. Yes, I had two other quarterbacks on the roster. I wanted to make sure he had no snaps or any interference, much like any other backup quarterback. And I had him as the focus player and I did the work with him. And he went from a 69 overall to gaining five upgrades for just sitting on the bench. So no snap count, nothing like some of the other players have gotten. I was able to get him up to a 74 overall with those boosts. And he got one of the breakouts during the mini games to gain a dev trait. So now I went from having a 69 overall normal dev quarterback as my third stringer to now having a 74 overall star development quarterback and this is the same kind of story that you'll have how many times you take a quarterback he's not what you expected and you maybe just give up on him or you just never try but now you can see that if you put that work in he could end up being your future quarterback it might just take two seasons and if you do this again with him with the star development who knows maybe you get another five or six upgrades for doing one more season and now you're looking at close to an 80 overall quarterback that you didn't think you would be able to get much work out of when you drafted him or signed him and then the final player I did a test with was DJ Chark Jr. I wanted to do one with your standard free agent class type of player, you know, mid to high 70s, 26, maybe 27 years old, normal development, nothing that you're really gonna be that obsessed with trying to get, unless you're really just a fan of the player themselves. And this was the only one that I saw where I was like, you know what, maybe this isn't worth all of the work. So after doing a full season of the mini games with him, and this is also him starting. So this is including any type of milestones or games that he could have earned XP from because he was one of our starting receivers. He was only able to get three, which isn't too bad, but out of all the other players, he had the least amount of skill points and he had the most opportunity to gain them by being a starter. So after all the upgrades, he ends up being an 80 overall deep threat. And now this is more so, I guess, for your own decision-making. Do you think that would be worth it for a middle of the road veteran? Or do you think that would be better spent on a younger player or a different position? Maybe you have a team that's completely stacked and this is all you have left is a middle of the road veteran and you want to put some extra work into them. By all means, knock yourself out. Me personally, I don't think it would be worth it to put a player like DJ Chark through this kind of a extra work because you're really only getting three overalls he wasn't able to get a dev increase. He might have, who knows? Like I said, it's very hard to do and it takes a lot of them to sort of get the roll to go back. It's almost like a scratch off ticket, <laughs> to be honest with you guys. If you ever done them, you know, chances are you might be able to win your money back, but the chance of you winning extra money is is not very often. And that's the same with the, the role of the dev increase through the mini games or the training camp. And so that is the testing that I was able to do. So again, guys, this is all up to your own prerogative. Which players do you want to put the work into? Do you even feel like it? Maybe some of you don't care about the XP and you just don't want to have players that get that much better and you're okay with waiting it out and just getting the one to two. On average, what I was able to see is that if a player did not have the focus player and they weren't exactly like a high overall or a guy that had a really high development, pre a really high development trait, then they got maybe two upgrades. Maybe if they were a little bit younger or lower overall, they got three but it usually capped at three. You weren't getting any player that had four or five, six of them, like the guys that we did all the testing for. Some of the positions that I would really focus on the most, I would say would be your skill positions, of course. Those seem to be the easiest mini games. Um, but if you're really looking to round out a player, the best options you have are probably your defensive linemen and maybe your receivers or tight ends because you have multiple archetypes that you really want to upgrade or maybe even quarterbacks, right? You want to keep doing strong arm and scrambler or something. And for DNs, maybe you want to keep them as a run stopper, but you also want them to get better as a power rusher, you know, or a receiver where you want them to be a deep threat, but also work in the slot for you where those six or seven upgrades that you get per player are really only going to be two or three per overall because they might not be balanced. So keep that in mind as well when you're doing this stuff. So I want you guys to let me know down below. Did you know that you were able to get that many upgrade points for some of these players? Or have you been ignoring the weekly training and the mini games? Sort of like I was in the beginning of Madden because I just didn't know what to expect. And the training camp. 
now after seeing this, I can tell you guys, I will definitely be working on the same players. I was doing like switcher outs where like one week I would do this player and then a couple weeks later I would do that player. Now I feel like it's even that much more important for me to really look at my roster and identify three to six players, depending on how many focus players you're able to do. I want to really bolster this roster and then focus on them all season long. And then just to reiterate to you guys what I was able to do in this, I did not touch any of the settings. I had base settings for XP and progression. Uh, I did not play any games. I did not do any of the breakout scenarios or like team scenarios that you'll see in your like your weekly uh, tasks to do on the homepage of the franchise mode. So this was just from doing the mini games. Now imagine if maybe one of those players or two of them got included in a team scenario or a breakout scenario. Or maybe they hit a certain milestone in their stats and they got an extra couple of upgrades. You could be looking at potentially getting anywhere from seven to 10 overall difference just from doing this extra work alongside the rest of the stuff that you normally do. The bottom line is Madden doesn't always do everything right, but sometimes they give you some awesome tools that sort of go under the radar and you really have to toy around with and see if it's worthwhile. Let me know down below if you guys have used this before or if this is something that you haven't really looked too much into because you just maybe weren't aware of how fruitful it can be for a player. And while you're at it, if you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful to you at all, please consider leaving a like button. It helps me out tremendously. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here and you wanna see more of these kind of videos or check out the franchise of videos that I do um, every week. Right now we're doing the bucks and hit that bell notification so you know when these videos go live. I will see you guys next time.